Image scaling. How do you interpolate pixel values in order to scale images? So why is it hard to scale images? Let's start off by discussing the two types of general images, vector graphics and raster images. Vector graphics represent images using Cartesian coordinate points and shapes, for example, polygons and circles. Unlike raster images, vector graphics do not suffer from aliasing. We have no issues scaling vector graphics. So some file formats you might have seen before are SVG or PDF occasionally using vector graphics. Aliasing occurs when real-world objects, which comprise of smooth continuous curves, are rasterized using pixels. So we can see here that the letter A is definitely smoother when we apply aliasing. Otherwise, it has those jagged edges. This is what aliasing occurs and it occurs in rasterized images. So raster images, unlike vector graphics, provide a bitmap where each pixel is provided a series of bits to describe its look. The look can be described using various methods, but there's typically grayscale or RGB, so for example sRGB, sCRGB, etc. So if you go to Photoshop or Paint, how does the image resizing actually work? Here's our basic image. We have a height of 3 pixels, and then we have a width of 6 pixels. And it's a 3 by 6 image, but let's say we want to make it 6 by 12. How do we accomplish this? So if I go through, I'm going to have to guess what type of color pixel goes there, and also what type of color pixel goes there. So there's three simple techniques. The first one is nearest neighbor. The second one is bilinear interpolation. And the third one is by cubic interpolation, which we'll cover in the next video. There's more advanced techniques beyond the scope of this video, such as sync and lacos resampling, neural networks, and more. So nearest neighbor. The algorithm is pretty simple. Iterate over all points in the image. For each pixel in the enlarged image, assign the color to be the color of the nearest equivalent pixel in the original image. You can use Euclidean distance for computing the closest distance point. You really only need to consider four points, which is the top, left, right, and bottom. So, we see the blue. The blue is the nearest point here because this is the top left corner. And then you can assume that the top left pixel in the original image is at zero, even when we multiply by two, it's still at zero. The coordinate of the green is, in this case, at one zero. With respect to x, multiplied by two is two zero. So we have an issue here. This one's halfway between two colors. What do we do? Well, we can choose to do average or we can always just pick a cardinal direction to always favor. So if we do this, we see we get a deep green and then we can continue this out throughout the whole diagram. And we get a fairly interesting result. Bilinear interpolation. Please take special note of the name composition, bilinear. So this algorithm works by iterating all points in the image. So for each pixel, we first compute the weighted average color with respect to the distance to the top left and top right pixel. And we do the same for the bottom left and bottom right pixel. And lastly, we compute the weighted average with respect to the y distance between the two generated colors. So how does this work? Let's go step by step. So here we have a basic four pixels, the deep blues on the left side, and then the green and red on the right side. Then we have this gray that we want to compute the color of. So we first divide it up and we see that there's 20 millimeters roughly of distance between the left side and then this pixel and 80 millimeters on the right side. So we should compute a weighted sum so that it favors the blue significantly more than the green because it's closer to the blue. If we assume that the left side RGB is 0, 0 to 55, the right side RGB is 0 to 55, 0, not RGB, red, green, blue. Then if we compute the weighted sum, where we just simply do, for example, 0 times 80 plus 255 times 20 divided by 100. It's a simple weighted average. We get this RGB of like this deep blue. We actually do the exact same thing on the bottom. We take the blue and the red. We get an RGB of sort of a purplish color. And then the last step is actually doing the exact same thing but vertically. So we see that it's closer to the bottom blue. So we take our generated value horizontally and then we simply weigh it more than the other one by doing 70 divided by 100 as the fraction that we multiply the RGB value by. So our end result is this nice deep blue with a little bit of purple. So why is it called bilinear? Well, we essentially performed the linear interpolation between two values twice. We did this first on the x-axis and y-axis. This is similar to doing a line of best fit between two points and computing the weighted mean. So here's an example if you want to look through the comparison of bilinear shrink and nearest neighbor shrink or upscaling using bilinear and nearest neighbor. Bilinear tends to be better. Thank you very much for watching and 
Please subscribe for new videos published every Friday at 12pm Eastern.